Hey there, welcome back to Ancient Recipes. Today, we're making the original Dutch colonial era donuts. These guys have a surprisingly scary connection to Halloween time too. Hey there, I'm Sola Elwaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. It's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? We're gonna give you the donut's whole story. Okay, bad joke, I know. So first, where did these tasty little fried balls of dough come from? Good question. The modern donut, the one we know and love, originated from a Dutch specialty originally called Ollie Cook, or oily cakes. And believe it or not, there was no hole. These little balls of dough were fried in pork fat and stuffed with fruits, nuts, or other fillings that didn't require cooking. Okay, so then where did the hole come from? There are a lot of theories, but the most popular one is about English ship captain Hanson Gregory. Some say he punched a hole in the middle with a tin pepper box because he didn't like how the middle was always undercooked. While others believe he did it so he could put the donut on the ship's helm, making it easier to eat while he steered the boat. Maybe we'll never know the truth, but the bigger question you may be asking is, what do donuts have to do with Halloween? Well. Washington Irving grew up in a very Dutch Hudson Valley, so it makes sense that he is said to be the first ever author to wax poetic about them in his short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. He wrote, there was the doughty donut, the tender Ollie cook, and the crisp and crumbling crawler, sweet cakes and short cakes, ginger cakes and honey cakes, and the whole family of cakes. So there you have it, the short and sweet history of donuts. All right, I'm ready to make these little dudes. We're gonna start with the original Dutch colonial Ali cook, a big round dough ball stuffed and fried in pig fat. And then we're gonna make a more modern version called the Dodie Donut, which yep, had the iconic hole in the middle. We're gonna make one big batch of dough for both. The leavening for our dough is something called ale barm, an ingredient we've used a lot before in ancient recipes. And this is the original instant yeast. It's basically the scum that forms at the top of beer when it's fermented. And so we're gonna make a little levain. What that means is we're gonna mix our ale barm with flour and let this hang out overnight and it kind of kicks off the fermentation process. You make a levain like this similarly today, but you'll use an instant yeast or a sourdough starter. So I'm gonna set this aside. We have one that we already prepared yesterday. And the next thing I'm gonna do is soak our dried fruit. We got some raisins and citron and we are gonna soak it in a bit of brandy. And it's gonna get really nice and plump and give us a little spicy bite in the middle of our donuts. A little sweet, a little chewy, a little hit of booze. That also sounds amazing. So this also we prepared last night so we can have some time to really soak up all that brandy. So I'm gonna grab those and then we're gonna mix up our dough. Here we've got the ale barm levain that we mixed up last night. And if you take a look at it, it's like so bubbly, so alive. It looks exactly like when you make a levain with instant yeast, but it's got this bonus malty scent of beer, which I think is gonna flavor up the dough really nicely. And then here's our fruit, and you can see it's plumped up quite a bit. And oh yeah, you can really smell that brandy. So we're ready to mix up our dough now. It wasn't always easy to get these little fried balls of dough to cook evenly without burning. So Ollie Cook were stuffed with various fillings to take away from the undercooked center. Raisins and citrus were a very popular filling for this. First up, I'm gonna mix up my eggs. This is very similar to a current donut dough. We have eggs and we've got sugar and I'm gonna beat this up evenly. Now we're gonna add some milk, still a lot like when you make a donut today. I'm gonna whisk that up. And now I'm gonna add a little melted butter. We used to get donuts exactly twice a year growing up for each of the Eid celebrations because it was the only way my parents could get me to get up that early in the morning <laughs> and go to the mosque. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the Levain with my hand. It's easier to add the Levain by hand because it is so sticky. It's like a donut dough. Donut dough you'd make today, but with the bonus of the malty ale barm. Now to incorporate my Levain, I'm going to activate 
finger whisk. Break it up, get it really nice mixed in, and I'm gonna stir in a little bit of nutmeg. I'm gonna add my flour, and we're going to knead this dough until it's nice and soft and smooth. A lot of finger whisk action. So much of this show is just pounding and kneading and fermenting. We're gonna get this kneaded. You really wanna take your time and get good gluten development. And if you don't have the right gluten development, the yeast in the ale barm just can't like trap those CO2 bubbles. So basically what yeast does is it chomps down on those starches and it sits around and farts. And it blows up your dough with these little fart bubbles. And that's how you get that super fluffy texture. All right, now that I've been kneading for a while, you can see the dough's really transformed. It is smooth and taut and bouncy. Look at that, like a memory foam mattress or a trampoline. So that's how you know you got good gluten development. I'm gonna cover this up and it's going to rest at room temperature overnight. But we made one yesterday. So I'm gonna grab that and then we're gonna start forming and frying. Welcome back. Today, we're making donuts. Our dough has now risen and our fruit soaked. Now we can start putting together the alley cook. I know a lot of recipes tell you to punch your dough, but I think that's a little aggressive. We're just gonna press it flat and give it a fold. What this does is redistribute all those farty, yeasty burps and bubbles so that when you go to fry, you get another nice little poof. So just grab it, fold it over, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to be too crazy. So I'm gonna divide this in half for two styles. I'm just gonna eyeball it, and we're gonna start with the Ollie Cooks. When I used to make a lot of bread, like I used to make a lot of bread, I worked at this place where I was making like 400 rounds of bread a day. I used to be able to roll all of those buns in 15 minutes. But you, you, if you don't use it, you'll lose it, you know? So I'm definitely not that fast, but I still have the two-handed skill, which I'm proud of. So I'm just gonna lightly roll these into balls and we're gonna stuff them. When you're rolling dough, you don't wanna press down. You're not smushing it. Cup your hand and just have this like really gentle motion along the board. There's this instinct to wanna just smash it against the board. That's not necessary. Just be chill. What did the dough do to you? To fill? It's just like filling any other bow or dumpling. We're gonna press, shove a little bit of stuff in there, and seal her up. You can see that the fruit really plumped up, especially the citron. Now, to make sure that the fruit filling doesn't explode, you gotta keep doing this little gentle motion until this little butthole goes away. Once that's gone, you know that you got a good seal. It also makes sure that you work out any air that's inside the dough. If there's any pockets of air in there, it'll explode in the fryer. Let's do some hazelnuts. Same deal. I actually think that the stuffed donut is a really cool thing that we should bring back, because nowadays you just see custard or jam, which I'm actually not a huge fan of. I think it makes it too sweet. I'm sorry to all of the jelly donut lovers. I'm all about the glaze. So we pinch it shut and roll it to seal. Oh, well now I don't know which ones are hazelnut or fruit, so it's gonna be a surprise. Now that we've made our Ollie cook, I wanted to share a convo with you that I had a few weeks ago with Dutch colonial historian, Peter G. Rose. She has some great stories about the importance of Ollie cook. Hi, Peter. Thanks for joining us today from the Hudson Valley. To dive into things, how common were the oily cakes that we're gonna be making today in the Dutch colonial Hudson Valley? They were very common. Um, they were the, just made for special occasions and as treats. And I must say, it wasn't only the Hudson Valley, it was New Netherlands. The huh. Dutch colony wedged between New England 
and Virginia. So it's a vast area, which included, of course, the Hudson Valley. And there in that area, Olikuken, which is the Dutch way of saying it at the time, were a festival kind of food, festive food as well as just as a treat. Now, when I think about donuts, I think of it as a breakfast food, kind of. Back then, when would they be eating oily cooks or oily oh, cakes? Not for <laughs> breakfast. No, no. <laughs> During the day, um, maybe at, you know, people getting together. We have the writings from Washington Irving in which he tells that it was used during tea time but Mm. that's of course in the 19th century but they are generally more later in the day and they are still uh, a a treat and um, I don't I lived in Holland before I came here and I assure you I'm Dutch of course I Mm. assure you I have never heard of anybody eating an only bowl for <laughs> breakfast. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot about, you know, colonial Dutch history, and I'm really excited to try these oli cakes now. And I really appreciate your time and for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Welcome back. Today, we're making donuts. Now that our Ollie cooks are stuffed, I'm going to cover them up and we're going to move on to our doty donuts. So these are the ones with the hole in the middle. They're going to look like what I feel like a donut should look like. We're going to divide our dough into 12, roll them into balls, and then do our forming. So for poking the holes in these donuts, we're going to do it the same way Hanson Gregory is said to have done it, with a tin pepper box. In the mid-1800s, he told the Washington Post, I took the cover off the ship's tin pepper box and I cut it into the middle of the donut, the first hole ever seen by mortal eyes. Really dramatic. (laughs) So we're gonna do it the same way. So we're gonna give this a little smushy smush and we're gonna punch out the hole. Now, he never mentioned anything about cooking up the donut holes, but I wanna cook up the donut holes because I love donut holes. They're just so fun, you just pop it in your mouth. So now, this is starting to look like the donut I know and love. I am really excited to taste these because I think that the ale barm's gonna really add this like nice yeasty, malty beer flavor. You know, beer has this nice caramelized, nutty brown taste because it goes through like this Maillard reaction through the fermentation process. So it's gonna add a lot of deep notes, but either way, I think it's gonna be really good because so far it's just a really good donut dough. Really nice, bouncy, soft, smooth. And we're frying it in lard. Come on, it's gonna be incredible. Our Ollie cooks are stuffed, our doty donuts are cut out into the circle shape, and we are ready to start frying. So let's plop these guys in here. Now, fry safety always. Be very close to the surface when you plop. I know it seems a little scary, but you do not want splashback. And the best way is to just get real close with your fingies. You can do it, I believe in you. Look at them go. Let's get a couple of flips in there. Wow, they're really swimming. As long as your oil's not too hot, a good indicator of doneness is just color. You know, if you're rolling around 350, once we get that nice golden brown hue, you're good to go. And hopefully they're cooked through, otherwise the captain will be mad at us. Frying in lard is fantastic. I always like to fry in a saturated fat. Usually I go for coconut oil. Saturated fats tend to leave your fried goods less like oily afterwards, especially when we're talking about doughs. We're getting some good color, I think. 
These guys are looking good. We're gonna switch to our Dodie Donuts. Oh, but while these are still nice and warm, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of sugar. Kinda of sweeten them up just a touch. Although, you know, if it was up to me, it would be a maple glaze. So let's get these Dodie Do's floating in our fat. And we've got our holes because I'm not wasting this beautiful dough. Now, because these have the holes, they're also gonna cook up a lot faster. I love donut holes because they're so tiny. You can just have 12 of them. It's very fun. Now these guys, I wanna like fully enrobe in sugar. So I'm gonna get this bowl close by. Since these donuts have holes in them, they kind of just stay put and you just need to flip them once. When you're doing a ball like that, you do have to rotate it more frequently to get it fully cooked evenly. So it is a little bit easier. Like the hole does a lot of things. He was smart. If he did, if he was the first ever hole, as he claims, it is really smart. So you see, we got really nice golden brown on one side. I'm keeping those holes rolling. Okay, I think our donuts might be ready. And we're gonna get them all sugared up. Now, while these are nice and warm, let's turn them in some sugar. I wish there was a bit of cinnamon in here, but this is what they said they did, straight up sug, so that's what we're doing. But we do have nutmeg in the dough. There's nutmeg and ale barm, so there's probably plenty of flavor. I am really looking forward to tasting these. Our Ollie Cook and Dodie Donuts are finally ready for me to eat them, and I can't wait. I really want to start with the first, the Ollie Cook. And I do not remember which one has hazelnuts or fruit, so it'll be a fun surprise. I'm just going to bite into it. There's a sugar. What is that, hazelnut? Mm-hmm. So, it tastes like a really good donut. A lot like a brioche donut, really nicely fried. You get that flavor from the ale barm, a little bit of nuttiness from the nutmeg, and I got hazelnut, which is a really nice pop. I love the texture of the hazelnut with the soft donut. And you know, sugar coating, that's delicious. I mean, it's a great donut. Now that I've looked inside of here, even though this is nicely fried, nicely proved, when you get to the center, there is a little bit of slightly undercooked dough because it is so big. So I'm really excited now to move on to the Dodie donut, hole punched out, and look at this, functionality as well. Uh, I guess this is, this kind of feels like something Homer Simpson would do, just stacks of donuts on the ship's helm. Let's give her a try. Gotta say, this is a lot better. It's crazy because it's the same dough, but because it has the hole in the middle, it cooked up faster and cooked all the way through. So here we have a little bit of unevenness, like the outside's a little bit overcooked and the inside's a little bit undercooked, and this is perfectly cooked because of the whole innovation. And it works, it fits on the ship's helm. It's delicious. It's the donut you know and love with a hit of beer flavor. So what can go wrong? All right, so I'm gonna try one with fruit in it. I ripped it open so I can find, confirm it, but here we go. Wow, I, I love the brandy soaked fruit. You really get a punch of booze. It's almost like a shot in the morning. And the texture of the chewy fruit with the fluffy donut is really nice with the sugary outside. I actually like this more than the hazelnut. I thought I would love the hazelnut because of the crunch, and that is nice. When I do this at home, I'm gonna mix the nuts and the fruit, double it up. That sounds fantastic to me. Best of all the worlds. Well, I learned that donuts and donut holes have kind of been the same for hundreds of years. That people need to start filling their donuts with fruit, not just jelly. 
and that maybe I should rethink my New Year's routine to include these. It's kind of amazing how food can instantly make you feel connected to past cultures and time periods. It's kind of like a time machine made of dough and sugar and fruit. There's really nothing like it. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Did we get it? You guys know the deal by now. If you liked the episode, make sure to like and subscribe and check out other episodes down below. And if you have a vintage or ancient recipe you want us to try out, drop it in the comments. I always love to see them. <laughs>